a charge that's frequently laid at the door of those of us who advocate New Covenant theology is that we have no time, no use for the law of Moses. This is utterly false, of course. I want to show in this short clip how I use the law of Moses. The law of Moses is part of all scripture, and all scripture is profitable for me as a believer. And therefore I do use the law of Moses. But what I do not do, what I do not do, is adopt the system uh, of the covenant theologians. I don't go to the confessions. I don't go to the philosophers. I don't go to the theologians and all their systems and escape routes and clever schemes to get round the law. You know, the threefold division of the law, the moral law, the ceremonial law, and all the rest of it. And throw two parts of the threefold, moral, ceremonial, and judicial, throw the latter two, last two parts, into the waste paper basket. I don't do that. I read my New Testament, and I see how Christ used the law of Moses. I see how the apostles used it, and I follow their example. I notice with Christ that sometimes he says, the law said this, the law of Moses, but I say to you. He gives a contrast. He shows how the new covenant is different to the old covenant. There are several examples of this. Take the Sermon on the Mount for, for one example. And you'll see several cases there where he says, it was said to you, but I say to you. And then again, when I read the Apostles, I find uh, Paul, for example, in 1 Corinthians, for instance, going to the law, muzzling of an ox, the Passover, uh, and so on. And he uses the Old Covenant the law of Moses, to draw an example or a paradigm or a model or an illustration of his gospel doctrine. So I see that the law of Christ uses the law of Moses as part of all scripture. Sometimes it draws a contrast and says to the believer, we are not under that law now. Yeah. The law of Christ is very different in this respect. On other occasions it says, the law of Christ is illustrated by uh, a certain law in the Old Covenant. Now, to illustrate my point, in this short clip, I'm going to take some commandments from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 22, uh, verses 9 to 11. And I'm going to use those commandments, that passage, uh, in the second way that I've spoken of. Namely, as an illustration of the law of Christ, of the gospel, of the life and practice and doctrine of believers. The verses I'm talking about, Deuteronomy 22, verses 9 to 11, read like this. You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed. You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. You shall not wear cloth of wool and linen mixed together. Deuteronomy 22, 9 to 11. Now, I am not literally under that law. I use garments that are made up of more than one material. I don't ask the question, is, is this a, uh, a mixture in this garment? Or I just wear it without any compunction. There are some practical points here about plowing with an ox and a donkey, but then I don't do any plowing and I haven't got an ox and I haven't got a donkey. But this law, these three laws, are an illustration to me of gospel principles. Although I'm not under the law of Moses, I turn to it now as an illustration of apostolic doctrine. Now, if I was really preaching this theme, I would, of course, use the apostolic doctrine itself and then turn back to Deuteronomy as an illustration of uh, what I'm saying. But in this clip, I am designedly trying to show you how I illustrate the gospel by the law 
of Moses. Though I am not under it, though Christ has released me from it, I'm in the new covenant. Nevertheless, certain principles here come over into the gospel, into the new covenant. What principles? Well, it's very clear. No mixture. No mixture. Don't add mix. Don't mix together contrary principles or different principles. Wood and linen, ox and donkey, two kinds of seed, and so on. What's the gospel principle of this? Well, for example, 2 Corinthians 6, from verse 14 to chapter 7 and verse 1. Let me read the relevant verses. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? Well, that's very clear, isn't it? That's the doctrine which is illustrated by those laws in Deuteronomy. No mixture. Christ and Belial. Light and darkness. Believers and unbelievers. Righteousness and lawlessness. It's all there. The temple of God and idols. Paul goes on to speak of some very wonderful promises God gives. And he closes in, in chapter 7, verse 1, like this. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. The doctrine is very clear here. It's not just marriage unequally yoked with unbelievers, although that is a classic application of this doctrine. But the principle is uh, right across the board. As a believer, I must be separate from the world. When I was a young believer, way back in the 60s and early, in the late 50s and early 60s, in those days, the word separation was very commonly used among us. It's gone out of fashion now. But the principle still say, stays the same. Come out and be ye separate, says the Lord God. Don't be mixed with the world. I must be holy, and not holy and unholy. I can't walk together with the unbeliever. I live in the world, but I mustn't be in union with the world. As I say, the principle applies right across the board. Church life, for example, ecclesia life. I grieve, I grieve today that so much of what I see going on around me in evangelical and reformed churches is little more than Christendom. And what's Christendom? The union of church and state. Well, it may not be literally that, but that's how it started. The union of spiritual and carnal. The union of the world with the gospel. Paganism and Christ linked together. It's literally here, Christ and Belial. Worldly methods, worldly principles, inclusivism, where everybody is treated as a believer. The gospel loses its point in confrontation and power because men treat everybody as a kind of believer or pseudo-believer or coming into believing. I don't know how to describe it. This mixture, this sort of lapsed Christianity kind of talk, is directly rebuked by 2 Corinthians 6.14. And on. And the illustration is in the law. Don't plow with an ox and a donkey. The weapons of our warfare, said Paul, are not carnal, are not worldly, they're spiritual. But today we use carnal methods in the assemblies of Christ. And we not only ape the world, but very little difference, very often, to the world. All this is rebuked, condemned by the apostle in 2 Corinthians 6. And illustrated in Deuteronomy 22. The covenant theologian actually mixes the two covenants, the old and the new, together. Instead of understanding what John 1.17 says, the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The tremendous contrast there. They make out that the law and the gospel are two administrations of one covenant. 
a classic breaking of the 2 Corinthians 6 and uh, the illustration in Deuteronomy 22. And so we could go on in doctrine, in practice, personally, in the ecclesia, right across the board. What am I saying? You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed. You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. You shall not wear cloth of wool and linen mixed together. Why not? Because of the gospel principle. Come out, be separate. Don't be linked and united with unbelievers. This is what Paul is saying to the Corinthian church, and he's saying it to us today, brother and sister. And it's illustrated by Deuteronomy 22. As I say, if I was really uh, preaching that principle, I would start with 2 Corinthians 6. But in this short clip, all I've wanted to do is show you how I, as a New Covenant theologian, use the law of Moses. Sometimes there's a contrast. But sometimes there's a parallel. I use the law in this way to profit me as a believer. Now I must go and obey this commandment and this principle. This is the law of Christ, to live devotedly to Christ and be separate from union with the world. I've been called out, Ecclesia. I must live as a called out believer to the glory of God. Well, I hope this may be a little use to somebody. I don't know. It's if you hear it on the audio version or see it in the clip. This is how I use the law of Moses in the new covenant. I don't try and cobble together the new and the old wineskins, but I do use the old covenant to help me walk worthy of God in the new covenant.